Thank you, Ben. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kei Noguchi from DigitalOcean. Today, I'm going to talk about DigitalOcean Cloud Firewall powered by OBS and contract. So when you go to our website, www.digitalocean.com, you can see our Cloud Firewalls on the products pull-down menu. But I just want to make it clear. This talk is not about any marketing nor sales. This talk is about behind the scenes stories, how we made possible our cloud firewall with OBS and contract. So uh, before going to the detail, I'm going to share a bit about myself and my company, Dio. So I joined DigitalOcean last year, 2016, right after the long, oh, Independence Day weekend. And while I was at my friend's house to celebrate the Independence Day, I was so excited to join uh, Dio uh, to explore uh, how this cloud world working inside and out. So as a remote employee, I got the two weeks onboarding session held at the headquarter, DigitalOcean headquarter, at New York City. So I drove down to the airport and uh, took a direct flight to the JFK. By the way, I didn't have any alcohol at the party, just for the record. And after that, it was just like a, a roller coaster ride, doing a lot of fun stuff, starting from doing OBS bridge migrations, as well as developing and launching DigitalOcean Cloud Firewalls, and also releasing the open source telephone module to support DigitalOcean Firewall in it. So in addition to that, I'm so excited to join this company, a rapidly growing company, which now has more than 300 engineers or employees throughout the world. So today, I'm going to talk about three stories. First story, first story is about open source and DO to share how we use and how we upstream and how we open source our software. And the second story is about OBS and DO, how we design OBS and use it. And the third story is about contract and DO. To share how we came to the conclusion to use contract for our cloud firewall. Now let's dive on it. So open source. We DigitalOcean is that serious about open source. We use open source throughout our stack, and we upstream our back fixes and performance improvement into the main line, as well as we open source our internal software back to the community. For example, thank you, thank you, thank you. For example, we use KVM as a hypervisor solution, and we use OBS, obviously, for hypervisor networking, and we use contract for our distributed stateful firewall service here at DO. And in addition to this, we use Golang, Go programming language, among other languages, including C, of course, to develop internal software and give it back to the community. So let's, do, let, let's look at the, our GitHub website. As of last night, we have 56 repositories on our GitHub account, and some of them got a lot of stars. For example, Netbox, our IPAM tool written in Python, got 3,000 likes or stars. And some of the repositories has a really active de development going on. And as a matter of fact, my friend and colleague, Matt Layer, 
going to talk about our newly developed or open source the package called package OVS tomorrow. So the reason is crystal clear. Oh. The reason is crystal clear. Open source shapes the cloud as well as the internet. And we want to be part of it. And actually, we are. And that's, that's another reason why I'm here today to share some of the insider story with you. So let's move on to the next story. And let's change the gear a little bit to talk about OBS and DO. So DigitalOcean believes simplicity leads to the scalability. We design our hypervisor networking as simple as possible. Let me show you our hypervisor de design as 50,000 foot view. So we have KVM Linux in the bottom. We have OVS in the middle, of course. And we have droplets, that is our virtual machine instance, on top of it. That's it. That's simple. And inside OVS, we have single bridge code, bridge zero, as you can guess, and all the network interfaces, app links and downlinks to the droplets are connecting to this bridge. No more, no less. And inside this bridge, we have multiple tables for pipeline processing, just like Oven. Usually, the flow comes into the table Zello, as usual, and going through multiple tables and exit from the last table. In this diagram, table Z. So by the way, to be honest, last year we are here oh, Last year, last, last year, we are here, OBSCon. The design was not like that. So when we come back next year, maybe the design might be a little bit different. But this is the state of the art here at DO as of today. So since we are here, and last year, somebody told us uh, told at the conference that no flows. No OBS come. So I'm going to follow that mantra. So I'm going to show some of the flows from our uh, production environment so that you can get some idea how we use or how we design our OBS here at DO. So this is a sample flow in table zero for the ingress traffic out from droplet out into the outside world or next to the droplet. So as you can see, we have all the information like import, import ID, and source MAC, and a source IP pushed in the table. So whenever we create a droplet, those information is injected into the table. So this gives us a great performance as well as stability by reducing the dyna dynamicness of the open flow. That is really important to have a stable network in the cloud environment just like us. So let me move on to the next story. That is contract and DO. So when I joined DO last year, we had the design phase of our cloud firewall. And one of the discussion points back then was this question, stateful or stateless? So back then, our obvious version was 2.4. And we didn't use kernel contract module at all here at DO, which means to provide the performant stateful firewall service to our customer, we need to fast to upgrade OBS to 2.5. That was the latest and greatest OBS release back then with contract support. As well as, we need to make sure kind of contract module not going to do any harm on our hypervisor. 
By the way, that is a big deal by considering about our cloud scale. Back then, we had more than 10,000 hypervisors. And making sure all the hypervisors are going to work right. And back then, I still remember that I spent a lot of time to read and read the blog posts and the documentations regarding stateless and stateful firewall services, as well as OBS and contract relationships and IP tables, you name it. But there was, that was one slide shined a lot. That was this slide presented here at OBSCOM in 2014 by Justin and Thomas, talking about what the difference between stateless and a stateful firewall, as well as how OBS and a contract going to achieve stateful firewall. It's a great lead. And I just want to say this is yet another great example of the beauty of open source, to share the knowledge, not only for now, but also in the future. You know, we are already in 2018, and this is the one of the top hit in Google Search. So I actually did, or actually got the charter to explore the contract performance or impact in our environment. And since I did a proof of concept, I would say naive proof of concept of contract performance impact. So I'm going to share that diagram I created back then with you so that you can get some feel that we had this kind of discussion and that discussion. So here we go. So this is a diagram I created by GNU Plot. Yes, GNU Plot. I'm a big fan of ASCII art, by the way. <laughs> Showing the contract entries in the kernel and actual throughput. So the x-axis is the number of contract entries in the kernel, starting from 0 to 1 million. And the y-axis is the actual throughput with oh, mega BPS. And we did this benchmarking by having two, by having two droplets on a single hypervisor with one gigabps OBS policing cap. That was the configuration we had back then. And as you can see, one million contract entries didn't show any performance degrade. Yes, it's not the real production environment benchmarking, but this gave us a good go sign with this path. And next graph is the CPU load with the same benchmarking environment. Inject 1 million entries, contract entries. It's a dummy entries with a couple of real entries and around IPATH. And we got some CPU load increase, but that's really negligible. And this was not the showstopper for us to move on to the stateful firewall service with contract. And Last graph is the memory usage on a hypervisor with the contract entry in the kernel. As you can see, the increase is linear. With 1 million entries, we, requires, we required 500 megabytes additional memory on the hypervisor, which means 500 bytes per single contract entry which is sounds right by looking at the kernel of data structure. So this was also OK, or not a big, not a short stopper for us to proceed this path. So after doing additional benchmarking, as well as design discussion internally, we decided to go with our cloud firewall with stateful firewall with OBS and contract. And I feel we made the right decision by looking at the feedbacks and comments from our customers and users. So since we are here, and I'm going to show you some of the contract flow entries so that you can get the idea how we achieve this stateful follow here at DO. So I'm using the same diagram. For this contract service, we 
created additional tables in the middle in the pipeline. I call it C1, C2, and C3. C1 table is more like a contract classification table. So whenever a customer enabled a firewall service, we inject some special flow entry so that process is going to go through to C2 and C3. And if the customer doesn't have that firewall service, there is no flows, so just skip to the, oh, the, the normal process. That is table Z in this diagram. And C2 is more of the default contract table that contains the default flows that if the flow is tracked by the contract table, OK, this is a legit flow. So we're going to skip the C3 table and move back to the normal pro flow process. And in C3 is we call user classification user policy table. That actually contains user policies, just like a one-to-one -one mapping with the firewall rules and OBS flows. OK, so this is the sample or example flows in the C1 table. As I mentioned before, this is kind of switch. When you enable firewall, this flow will be injected into the table so that OBS going to be, be, behave that, oh, this is, uh, by the way, this is an uh, ingress firewall example. So the traffic comes in, and there is a MAC address for this specific droplet. OK, so we're going to record that information in the contract, contractor, connection tracker, and then move on to the C2. And if the flow entry is not there for, let's say, my droplet, which doesn't have any firewall, just go down to the de default flow. That is telling you just go to the warning table. That is table Z. So this is a C1. And this is a C2 table. That's a second table, default flow. So it contains the generic contract flows that if the flow is already tracked by the contract table in the kernel, yeah, this is a rigid flow. Let's skip the C3 table and move on to the table Z. If not, you got to go through the C3 table. That's the default flow in this table. And the last table is the user policy table, which contains all the policy information. So this case is uh, HTTPS or TLS flow, incoming TLS flows from specific source IP, that is 112.0 slash 24. And destination, is Mac, destination MAC is this specific droplet. Then we're going to inject that in that flow in the contract table. Otherwise, we just drop. Our firewall policy is default drop. So that this is going to work nicely. And because of, because of the contract, the policy, user policy is really simple. We don't, we don't need any reverse tra traffic flow or anything. Just one flow is good enough to represent the income ingress firewall allow policy in the OBS table. This is a big, big plus from the performance point of view as well as management point of view. So if you're interested in our cloud firewall, please go to our website or hit us here today or tomorrow because we have a lot of cloud DO crew from around the world today. To recap, we love open source, we love OBS, and we love contract. Thank you so much for having me today. And uh, thank you. So uh, we have uh, time for questions. So uh, come up to one of the microphones or wave your hand at me if you have a question. I think everybody's uh, tired. Yeah, maybe ready for dinner. <laughs> you, 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 sound, you sounded uh, a very, uh, uh, very awake and enthusiastic, uh, though. <laughs> so I'm, I, I admire that. It, it's a little late for me, too. Thank you so much. All right, well, let, let's thank our speaker one more time. Thank you.